Twisted City is an album about London, but as far as the recording of it goes, it's actually a tale of two cities. It was born out of constant travelling between my hometown, Dublin, and the slightly bigger smoke that is the UK capital. Between 2002 and 2004, I was flying between the two cities every couple of weeks, partly to try and establish myself with mixed results as a musician in the UK, and partly because I'd started going out with a girl over there. And as I was travelling, I would usually be thinking of ideas for songs. And these songs, a lot of them conceived in airport lounges and railway stations, ended up forming the basis of Twisted City. A lot of the recording of Twisted City was done in an attic in my mother's house. If you solo the vocal tracks, you can hear that attic. It was a Mike Oldfield situation. I didn't really have a band, so I just made do with playing the instruments myself. I'm not really sure I knew what I was doing half the time, but I just went with my good instincts and everything. A producer called Roger Bashirian got involved with a couple of tracks, You Carry On and Wherever. He produced bands like Squeeze and Elvis Costello and The Attractions in the late 70s, and also the Irish band Bellex One, so it was good working with him. Mainly, though, I was a complete control freak with this album. In hindsight, I should have involved more people and been more open to ideas. But you live and you learn. Oh, I keep walking into doors I keep hearing stuff I heard before Before I recorded Twisted City, I'd been trying to make an epic concept album, something that never saw the light of day. It was too ambitious and I didn't know how to do concept albums properly. I'd been trying to do prog rock without a band and it wasn't really happening. So I left that record to one side and moved on to Twisted City. With Twisted City I was trying to get a more basic sort of sound together. I wanted to make a more in-your-face, punchy guitar album. I guess reference points would have been the guitar tracks from the Beatles' Revolver and the more straightforward rock from Bowie's Ziggy Stardust, with a bit of Stone Roses thrown in for good measure. I don't think it ended up being all that in-your-face, although there are some fairly good guitar moments on it. When I was working on the record, I spent a whole summer in London, where I met the girl who was shortly going to enjoy the dubious pleasure of becoming my wife. 
She was at work one day and I was bored, so I decided to get on a train to Liverpool and do all the Beatles touristy stuff. On the train, I got chatting to this teacher who told me about a poem called Dart that she was teaching her pupils. It was about the river Dart. The river is the voice of this poem, and as it flows, it tells the stories of all the people who live and work by it. Now, at the time, I'd been looking for something to try to connect my bunch of random songs that I'd written while travelling together. And the minute this teacher started talking about the poem, I thought, aha, that river business is a good idea. So I started to think what I could do along those lines, and eventually I settled upon the idea that my album was going to be a tube journey, with every song about a place, person or experience in London. You've been falling down forever You write a song to make you You better watch yourself from here The world is yours, it's for the taking It makes up for what you're breaking And when I look I wanted to capture some of the real sounds of London on the record, so I went down into the underground with a mini disc recorder and recorded various tube noises. The album starts with the tube driver that I recorded. He's announcing the departure of a train. I don't reckon he thought he'd be announcing the start of an album too. For some of the songs, I recorded my mate Roger Woolman shouting in a London accent. Roger was Johnny Rotten in a Sex Pistols tribute band that I used to do sound for at the time. And on the title track of the album, I wanted him to yell as though he was an impatient London businessman going down an escalator. While I was recording the album, I overdid it a bit with volume. I was monitoring things way, way too loud in the studio. Unfortunately, this led to me developing a hearing condition called hyperacusis, where you basically start to perceive sounds as way louder than they actually are. This slowed down the release of the album no end because I spent a lot of time avoiding music altogether, and also the first mix of the album sounded atrocious because I'd simply mixed it at a ridiculously low level in a bid to stop my ears hurting. The album eventually came out thanks to a very kind music industry contact I had called Liam Toner, who, thanks to a friend of a friend heard it and liked the album enough to help me release it independently. I owe him an awful lot. I didn't really have the means, the know-how, or most importantly the fans to stage a tour of the UK with the record, so with the tube connection and everything I decided to do some London travel themed gigs to promote the album. I ended up doing a gig on a London bus, a boat, a tube and even in a taxi. Everything was done on a shoestring but it worked in terms of getting the album some publicity, even if that was some very, very strange publicity. 
Now, there are, of course, plenty of people interested in trains, and quite rightly too. But Chris Singleton, he loves the tube so much, he's written an entire album about it. Most Londoners only put pen to paper to complain about the tube, not to write songs celebrating it. But Chris finds the capital's much maligned transport system an abundant source of inspiration. They have just such a good sound. They have just such good songs. They're so perfect, so beautiful. Wow, he's already conquered the states, but first he needs to win over the regulars on the Northern and the Jubilee Line. It's been interesting looking back at Twisted City. The album's got its flaws and it was accompanied by a series of bad haircuts, but it captures all the stuff I was going through in London back in the day. And listening to it again, I think it does have some good songs on it. I would think that though. You've been down.